Hello to you. How are you doing? How has your week been? It's another Sunday and I am so glad to be um, sharing with you again. We are always thrilled to spend some time with the, in the Word with you. Um, and how how is your life going? How is family? How are things? I want to encourage you that no matter what it is you are going through, that God is on your side and He will come true for you. Amen. So um, I want to thank Pastor for the opportunity again to share. Um, I have been enjoying my time sharing with you every Sunday. And it's, it has been a, a learning, a teaching experience for me. And I believe you have been blessed. So um, today we're going to be sharing a bit about self-sacrifice. Um, I don't know if you know, but I'm sure you do that we are in the Lent period. So Lent starts from Ash Wednesday and it goes up until um, Good Friday, I think Good Friday or thereabouts. Um, and this is a time where many Christians spend time reflecting on the sufferings of Jesus. It's about, I think they say it's about, you know, 42 days or so, some people say 46 days. But, you know, the, the major thing is many people take it to represent um, the 40 days that Jesus fasted while he was in the ministry, while he was in the wilderness. At that time, he was preparing for ministry and he spent 40 days and 40 nights without food or water. And he was in the wilderness and he spent this time preparing. So many people take out this time, this Lenten period, um, and deny themselves something. They self-sacrifice. They deny the flesh something to prepare themselves for glory, for Easter. Pastor, it would be great for us to share a bit about Lent. Um, many, many, you know, Pentecostal churches don't observe it as religiously as um, many Orthodox churches, many Orthodox churches take out this time um, to, you know, deny themselves. Many Orthodox churches say there are no weddings during this time, no funerals during this time, you know, there's so many things they put in place. And it's all geared towards, you know, this should be a solemn period, this should be a time of introspection, reflection, self-denial, preparing oneself um, for what God is going to do. And I think it is significant for us to take out this time as, we, as it leads up to Easter, to think about the sufferings of Jesus, what Jesus went through, which will culminate on, on Good Friday, but what Jesus came to earth to do and what he went through, what it took for him to go to the cross suffer and die and that is the reason we are here today that is the reason why um, we can share it's the reason why we can sing it's the reason why we can come out and boldly profess we are christians because he saved us from our sins because he rose up gloriously on easter sunday and um, this is the reason for our faith so let us pray father we thank you we bless you we glorify you we honor you lord it's another day we have come to hear from you. Father, we ask that your word comes to us in accents clear and still. Open the eyes of our understanding and help us, Lord God, to understand your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So um, I want us to go to, to that passage in Luke chapter 4 when Jesus was in the wilderness and just look at um, the temptations of Jesus in the wilderness. So this was immediately after his baptism. So Luke chapter 4, 1 to 13, it says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days 
he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them, he was hungry. It's interesting that he said for 40 days he was tempted. You know, many of us, you know, you know the way it was taught to us. We feel he fasted and prayed for 40 days. And then after the fasting, then the devil came to tempt him. But here it's saying that he was tempted for 40 days. Can you imagine being bombarded for 40 days? The enemy was on his case. And it says, the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, Tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all the authority and splendor. It has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. He left him until an opportune time, which means the enemy came back as he always does. But it's, you know, this is, is very sobering that the enemy would come to the Son of God, who is God himself, and tempt him for 40 days, tempting for 40 days. And this is the time Jesus set apart to prepare himself for what was coming. So the enemy knows, the enemy knows he has an idea of the seasons of your life and he comes and brings, and these temptations, you know, devil doesn't know any new tricks. They're all old tricks. He just recycles and becomes creative about them and just repackages them and rebrands them. But it is the same thing. It is the same thing. The enemy knows your weaknesses, okay, you know. He knew that for Jesus to be fasting for 40 days, Jesus was hungry. I mean, everybody would know that. Jesus was hungry and the first thing he did was to come and tempt him with, you know, the, with the flesh, what your flesh wants, you know. It, it comes down to self-denial, self-control, self-discipline. It's one of the reasons why some denominations during Lent do not eat meat. Some denominations during Lent uh, do not drink wine, do not go for parties and things like that. They are denying the self what, does, what the flesh really wants. You know, the flesh wants to enjoy. The flesh is very, very lazy, wants to enjoy, wants to feel good. And it's the first place the enemy went to. It's the first place he went to. If you are the son of God, it's easy now. Make these stones to become bread. Jesus quoted this important scripture, and where it came from was, was you know, was Moses. It was Moses who said this about the children of Israel when they were in manna, when they were in the wilderness, and and God um, gave them manna. And he said he did this so that you will know that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. It is God's word that sustains us, the real us. Man does not live by bread alone. Yes, the flesh needs bread to survive, but man, the real man, does not live by bread. Does not live by bread. So when you think about the tripartite man, you think of the body, soul, and spirit. Yes, the body needs bread, but the whole of man does not live by bread alone. So this is a time where we can't deny ourselves. This is next year, it's leading up to Easter. We can't deny ourselves something, something that our flesh loves, our food, um, our TV, our social media. Um, you know, one of the things we know we, we, we are so used to, we can't do without. This is the time to just tell your flesh, man, the whole of me, I don't need this thing. 
to survive. I am surviving. I live by the word of God. I live by the word of God. It is God's word that sustains me. And you put it to your flesh and you deny your flesh that thing. You bring your flesh under. Hallelujah. Just like Jesus did. It's interesting that he, 40 days, can you imagine how hungry you would be? For many of us, if we fast for eight hours, eight hours, you know, or we do six to six, by that six, anything we see, we are throwing into, we cannot, I mean, we, anything we see, we have to throw into our mouth, no matter how unhealthy, no matter how bad it is. But just like a beg, I just need something to sustain myself. My body's shaking, my body's shaking. Can you imagine how your body will be shaking? 40 days and 40 nights, no food. But Jesus was still able, you know, because his flesh had died, that commander. Hunger had come, you know, the Bible says he was very hungry. But he was able to suppress it and still say, when the enemy came, man shall not live by bread alone. Food is not everything. What the flesh wants is not everything. There is more to life and there's more to what God has called us to do than what our flesh enjoys. You know, some people say Jesus did not die for it to make you happy, to make you rich. You know, it's true that, yes, he was made rich. He was made poor for us to become rich. But the sole purpose of him dying was not just so you can buy a new car, buy a new house. All those things are the side, you know, like the side dishes. It isn't the main dish. It isn't the main dish. Amen. Second thing in the enemy, the enemy came to him with. Because remember, he was preparing for ministry. He was preparing to go out there. He hadn't yet made himself known. And the enemy said, ah, I can give you all the authority and splendor. It has been handed over to me. I can give you a shortcut. You don't need to work hard. You don't need to suffer. You don't need to suffer your body. You don't need to suffer your flesh. You know, just quick. All you need to do is just small worship. Just do like this. That's all. I'll give you anything you want. Anything you want. And the enemy is still tempting us with this today. We are obsessed with success. We are obsessed with becoming rich. We are obsessed with becoming famous. I mean, it's like an addiction. You know, everybody wants to be, you want to be known, you want to be an influence. Everybody wants to be out there. You know? And that's exactly what the enemy said. I can give it to you now. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to walk the streets, performing miracles. Do I will give you everything now. And the enemy comes to us every day with these sort of thoughts with these sort of temptations. You don't need to suffer too much. You don't need to, ah, this Christian work is hard. This Christian work is hard. This, there are easier ways. You don't need to work too hard to get this thing. There are easier ways. And many people take those broad ways, take those easier ways. But the Bible says that there is a, a way that seems right to a man. There's a way that seems easy. The end is destruction. The end is destruction. The Bible says a broad is the gate. You know the one that leads to this is broad, is wide. Many people find it. Many people find it. But the way that leads to life is narrow, it's slender. Few people find it. Few people find it. You know, many of us don't want to pay the price. We don't want to pay. Even, you know, we're talking about self sex Even just praying for an hour every day. Even studying your word. 30 minutes every day, studying those four chapters, study, you know, just paying the price to grow, pray, paying the price to grow spiritually, which is what we are talking about during then, bringing the body under and self-sacrificing for your spirit to rise, to be alive unto God. We're not ready to pay that price. We want to get it quick, 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 quick. It doesn't work anywhere in the natural, in the spiritual. It doesn't work anywhere for us to grow, for us to grow, for us to manifest as God's children. We need to pay the price. We need to pay the price. And that is what Jesus looked at. Jesus told him, see, he's only God. Because the truth is, once you get sidetracked, once you, you, 
you, you, you start to lose focus. You start to worship other things. And what is it that we worship? Money. Because that is what takes our attention. That is what we want. That is what we want more than anything else. That's what we want more than anything else. But no, you have to say no. I will not worship money. I will not worship myself. I will not worship man. I would worship only God. Only God deserves my loyalty. Amen. And then go to the third one. And Jesus said, worship. Jesus, um, the devil led him to the highest um, point of the temple and said, throw yourself down. Tempt God. Dare him. What God said he will. Oh yeah, try him. Try him. You know, many of us, we have that same temptation. Try it now. Try it. You know, what God said he will forgive now. You know, the grace which I say, eh, God has, Jesus has died. He has already died. He has, he has forgiven all our sins, the ones we sinned in the past, the ones we are sinning today, the ones we will sin until we die. He has forgiven us. So, uh -uh, eat, drink, and be merry. Chill out. There's no need to, you know, or like, ah, we want to push, push you to the limit. Ah, does God's word really say this? Ah, but, don't, ah, but there's always there's space for this, there's space for that. Ah, let's, let's do it like this. Let's drag it this way. Let's drag it that way. You know, what it says here, Jesus told him, don't put the Lord your God to test. Don't test God and see what will he do. Let's see, let's see. This is different from test and see that the Lord is good. Okay? This, that is different. So that is when you're using your faith to challenge. So that is different. But where you are doing something you shouldn't do because you want to see what God will do, then you are you are testing him. You are trying him. You are trying him. And that is not what we should be doing. Amen. So it's a call, you know, to be somber and to reflect what can you give up for them? Just have two weeks left. What can you give up for Lent? Amen. Let's read Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 to 27. I read this with, with my kids today and thought it was profound what Jesus said here. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Jesus said, anyone who wants to be my disciple, if you really want to be a follower of Jesus, you know, many of us that we call ourselves follower, followers of Jesus, you want to be a follower of Jesus, this is the prerequisite. Deny yourself. Is dying to self. Is putting yourself down. Is putting your needs last. It's dying to self. He said, deny yourself. Take up your cross. Take up that thing it is that you have to do. Take up your purpose. Take up what God has told you to do. And follow Jesus. You are a follower of Jesus. You follow true. You follow him. You know, Paul said that I may know him. The fellowship of his suffering. We need to be able to be there. We need to get ourselves there. If we're not there yet, then that is why we need to practice self-denial. We need to practice self-denial. There are some people who say, you know, even when things are rosy, they put themselves in a difficult position. They deny themselves because then they can be alert. Then they can make themselves aware of what is coming, of that they would give account. You know, sometimes we forget that we will give account. When we were children, they used to tell us, you know, these, these stories. Ah, that on the judgment day, there will be a very big television. It will be very big. It will be in the sky. Very big television. And on that television, 
the, the whole world will watch everything that you did. The ones you did in secret, the ones you were hiding behind the chair, the ones you went and stole something, they like everything you did. Eh? Everybody will see it. It will be on that big television, that big screen. Hey, the thing is of yours. We used to be so afraid. We're like, oh my God, they're going to see everything. Your father will be there, your mother will be there, your teacher will be there, your cousins will be there, everybody will be there, and they will see all the terrible things you've been doing. You know? So the things that used to keep us in check. Sometimes you want to do something, but like, <laughs> one day they will see me on the big screen going to steal somebody's sweets. You know? But this is the truth. We will all give account. We will all give account of everything that we do, that we say, that we think, the motives of our hearts, we will give account. The ones we did and the ones we didn't do that we were supposed to do. So it's so important. We discipline ourselves. Jesus said, anyone who will be my disciple, you need to deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. What will you be giving up for that? What will you be giving up? What can you deny yourself? What can you give away? So many of us, we have a lot. A lot that we're not using. Time to give away. Read yourself of baggage. Read yourself of the things that you don't need. Read yourself of the things that are no longer useful. Read yourself. Amen. Jesus said, What can anyone give in exchange for their soul? It is really, really sobering. It's a sobering thought because when you are at, you see, and you see people at the point of death. If you've ever seen anyone at the point of death, you see that there's nothing, nothing that can buy life, can buy, pay for it, someone's soul. What can you give in exchange for your soul? And life is so fragile. Like this. You know, Jesus said here, anyone who is trying to save their life, you're trying to preserve yourself. You're trying to preserve, preserve what you want. You want to take care of this body. You will lose. You end up losing. Because you're focused on the wrong thing. But anyone who gives their life, lays their life down for me, this is what Jesus said. You are the one who will gain. You will gain. So really, when we die to self and when we self-sacrifice, we're not losing. We are gaining. People may think we're losing. We may look like the losers. But no, we will gain at the end. So what is more important, to gain here or to gain in eternity? What is more important, to be so successful here and to miss out on eternity? What can a man give in exchange for his soul? If your life were to end now, you know, and God told you, you have one more hour to live, what would you do with that hour? I going to spend it on social media. I going to spend it looking for a new car. I going to spend it working hard, see if you can buy a house. What will you give in exchange for your soul? So it's time to reflect. It's time to to think. It's time to spend this next two weeks thinking. What can I deny myself? What can I give? What do I need to change? How can I suppress my flesh? Because if you let your flesh control you, it's a powerful master. A very powerful master. What would you be giving up for them? I want you to think about it and make a decision. Just two weeks. What can you give up for Lent? 
for your spirit to be alive unto God. Amen. Amen. So, yes, we've talked about um, subduing the flesh. What are the benefits? Subdue the flesh. You move to the next level. It's a time of, it's a, it's a preparation phase. And when you do it, you see God manifest then. You see yourself doing things, doing spiritual exploits that you never knew was, were, was possible. You are alive to God. We've talked about that. You are alive to God's will. God gives you direction. Once Jesus came out of the wilderness, he knew exactly what to do. And you see how he walked with precision. 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 His hearing was clear. Direction. He knew. Jesus said, anyone who follows me will not walk in darkness, will not walk in confusion. You would know what to do. How great would it be if you know, you know what decision to make. You know what jobs to apply for. You know when to move. You know when to, to stay. You know what to do. Amen. That is what comes when we bring our flesh on that spiritual awareness. Spiritual awareness. It's all the same thing. Divine direction. I'm trusting that God has spoken to us today. I want you to go home reflecting. What can I give up? What can I give up? How can I self-sacrifice the next two weeks? What can I do? And you can actually switch it up every day. One day you can say, no, no, not eating any meat today. Next day you can say, I'm not eating any carbs today, anything sweet today. Next day you can say, I'm not going to drink any, I'm going to give up soda. Lent. I'm not going to drink any fizzy drinks. It does if you do drink them. Um, anything you could say, I'll give up snacks for these next two weeks. I won't have any snacks. I'll just have my main meals, drink water. And that's it. You know, you can, you can say, I'm going to do a good deed or I'm going to forego buying lunch today and rather use that money to buy something for somebody else, contribute to a food bank or to a charity or something. What can you give up? It's just a, to be in, intentional. Think about it. What can I do every day for the next two weeks? to self-sacrifice, to deny myself something, deny myself something as an act of worship, as an act of worship to God, as an act of worship. So let us um, think about this, reflect on it, but that's not enough. We need to do, we need to start from today, from tomorrow. We need to start. What can you give up? Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We glorify you. We honor you. Thank you, Father, for your word. Help us, Lord. Help us, Father, Lord God. Let us grow into the people, the people that you made. Let us grow. Let us grow into the purpose, the original plan you had for our lives, Lord God. Help us, Lord. Put in our hearts what it is we need to give up. Put in our hearts where you would want us to serve, where you want us to help. Put us in touch with people who we can help, who we can support at this time. Let us have hearts that want to give rather than receive. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We glorify you only. We thank you. For we have asked and prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for our offerings. Father, we thank you. We bless everyone who's giving. We bless the titus. We ask for your increase to come upon them. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. So don't forget our Tuesday service says Pastor's recommenced his expose on Ephesians. It has been lit. Very good, very good. I mean, you don't want to miss it. And we are continuing our prayers on Wednesday and Friday. Lots of testimonies coming in. God is doing great things. If you want to join us, please get in touch on the website or leave your number or your email and we'll get back to you god bless you god bless you god be gracious to you let you know i believe god for open doors for you and doing this lent i am trusting that god will put a word in 